Hello, Matthew Taming here. Welcome to another video tutorial for S2 Page Builder 3. In this lesson, we're going to add a contact form on the page. Now, in order for you to utilize Page Builder on the front end of your website, you first have to log in. Once you log in, you're going to get a button that says Edit Page. And to activate Page Builder, all you have to do is click on the Edit Page button. So you have the contact form, and we're just going to drag it and drop it here. So once you drag it and drop it there, it activates in the left column the different items that it's asking for. So we just call this a contact form. And we're going to call this title, title. And you can look at look at the element here. You can put the type of tag that you want this to be H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And you can choose the font family. So let's choose Tahoma. And you can choose the line height. So I'm just leaving some of the default settings here. But one of the things that you can do is if you're following along is you can feel free to just kind of tweak it in and change different settings, see what you get. So let's go down to the line spacing. You can have one, two, three. So that's just going to add space between the lines. So I'm just going to lift it as the default. And you can choose the title color. So I'm just going to drag this. You can drag this right here and put that color. And this happens in real time as you're changing it. So when you scroll down, you want to make sure that you put in the recipient's email. This is your email. So anytime someone fills this form out, you're going to get the email. And then if you want to enable capture, it's, it's always a good idea to put the capture in there uh, for spam reasons. So you can put a basic capture. You can change the numbers here. So right now it's set to 3 plus 4, but if you want to change this to 4 plus 4 or 4 plus whatever number that you want to put there, uh, you can put that in as well. And then the capture column 12, you can change that to 7. And that's going to change the, the column size of it. And then the capture answer is going to let you know what the answer is. 5 plus 4 is 9. And then the number column name column size. So it gives a lot of flexibility to adjust each one accordingly. And if you want to show the label, you set to yes. If you notice, you notice I'm changing here, it changes too. So this part doesn't show the label. When you click yes, it shows the name, the email. So you want to hide the label. That's pretty much up to you. But I'm just going to hide it and then the custom button. So if you don't want to use this custom text where it says send message and you click on use custom button, you can change here to submit or whatever it is that you want it to be. And you can change the button family for this as well. And you can also change the style for it. So this right now is set to info. When I change to success, you notice the color change. When I change to danger. So you can customize the form if you wanted to go for a certain color scheme with your website. And you can also change the full button width. Do you want it to be full? No. When you set it to yes, it extends all the way at the bottom. And you can change the position for the icon position if you want to incorporate. So let's add an icon here. I'm just going to grab anything. And let's change the icon position. You can put it to the left or to the right. So you have the option to at the bottom here to check the responsiveness of uh, the page you're working on. As you click on it, you notice that it adjusts based on the screen size. This is really great. So if you want to see what the page is going to look like with the mobile, you can do that as well. And you can come here, change the caption answer. You can change the column, the width, and you can go over to the style. Now the style, you can change the text. You can add background. You can use the border. So if you're going to put a border on this, you can do that. You can put a border color. So I'm going to put this head in the random color. You can choose the, the border style, solid, double. Just use double. So as you're changing it, you notice that it's changing there. If you want to change the color again to something else, you can change that as well. And then the margin. The margin really comes into play when uh, you want to stack different atoms on top of each other. This is where the margins really come in and the pattern comes in um, as well. So if you want to enable the animation, when you set that to uh, animate, you want to put in a fade in fading down. So you scroll down, you have a ton of different options. So when you click on rotate in, that's what's going to happen. So let's choose something else. You want to click on zoom left, a zoom left. And you can kind of play around with these fading big left and the fading big left. And then you can choose the animation duration, uh, which by default, it, it's coming pretty fast. And then, of course, here for the advanced, do you want to add custom add-on width? Do you want to hide it on desktop, on tablet, or on mobile? The only time that you want to utilize this is if you have a reason why you don't want this form, let's say, to show up on desktop. Maybe you're doing some type of tests on mobile devices to see how many people actually fill out the form. Then you can click on hide, and it's going to hide this on the desktop. So you can also choose here the access level for this form. And as I mentioned before, if you have in a form that you don't want it to show on the desktop, 
and you want to collect data just from the mobile phones or from tablets, you can also designate here, do you want those people to create an account first, registered, or do you want to get data just from anyone that comes in? So you have that flexibility for you to choose the access level for this particular add-on. And as you can see, it's very simple, very easy. You can customize, you can change the colors, you can change the background, you can add a bunch of different things with it. That's pretty much just how you want it to go. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. And the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at adding alerts. So make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, like on Facebook, follow on Twitter and Instagram, so that anytime that I release a brand new video specifically for Page Builder 3, you're gonna be the first one to get access to it.